what is it like to be in Star Wars? What is it like to be the only actor? And I don't think about it in those terms. Back in 1975, when George asked George Lucas asked to meet me, a piece of artwork changed my life, and it was Ralph McQuarrie's concept painting. This character I'd never met before, 3 po you know, this, this face, this... And there was something that Ralph had got into that image that, that just spoke to me. I, I can't explain why. But this was an instant, like, click. That was the moment that I became interested in what this American George Lucas was saying. <laughs> I didn't care up to that point. Did you hear that? They shut down the main reactor. We'll be destroyed for sure. This is madness. There's one thing, being a two-dimensional piece of artwork, to change that into 3D reality, you know, took a bunch of people. I never counted how many people were involved in making the costume. But beloved Liz Moore, the sculptor, created the shape that we ultimately know around a mold of my body. Not a great experience and not a great visual. So she covered it up with clay and, and made the shape that you see. And after six months' work, it was almost ready for, for wearing, but not quite. But there I was now on the planet of Tatooine going, what have I done? It was a mistake from day one. I've got to rest before I fall apart. My joints are almost frozen. We would start off with one piece here, a kind of middle corsety thing, you know, which has a zipper up the side. It's very low tech. And then the pants, and then a leg, and a leg, and a foot, and a foot, and a foot. There were about 17 or 19 pieces. And they kind of all built up. And then the final sort of horror was the, like an Easter egg coming together around my face, you know, goodbye to the world. To be literally screwed in there and at the waist and at the head, I had to put my mind somewhere else. You know, that little moment where you thought, I could do with going to the bathroom right now. I could do with a drink. That almost was possible through a straw. Something to eat, not so much. So that sense of discipline had to kick in really early on, like on day one. And that was day one of 12 weeks. But is it worth it in the end? Of course it is. Walking in sand, if you look carefully when I'm walking past the big bones in the desert, you can see that I can barely move. And in fact, just as I got round the corner, I fell over. The saving grace uh, of my life, possibly, is my fondness for the character. Because, all right, physically, uh, it, it, it's a pain in the butt, and it's a pain everywhere else, actually, in all sorts of places. But then, do you really want to know what an actor goes through every moment to, 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 to deliver a performance? Not really. It's the job. You're meant to see the finished product. In the book, I do talk about coming to the end and, and, and being part of this wonderful team, the wonderful process. And one of the things I found I had written a lot in the book was how many times I mentioned the fans coming through. And gradually, more and more, I became, when I read it, I realized how important they have been and will continue to be in the whole process. So you have a wonderful family making these movies, but then you have a global, huge family that support the movies and that support each other and the friendships and the relationships that have grown because of these films. It's a magical add-on. Never really think about that when you're making a film. Like, certainly we never thought it was going to be global like it is. And that was George's genius. And now JJ, of course, has become the master. It was George Lucas who created the whole thing. And then JJ, who was, I think, 10 or 11 when he saw that first film, has retained that extraordinary boyhood enthusiasm that he had then. The camaraderie on most film sets can be good. It can be nothing sometimes. But on a Star Wars set, the camaraderie is is extraordinary because every person who's working in front or behind the camera knows Star Wars from many, many years ago and is part of that, knows what they're making, knows the story, the elements of the story they're planning to continue, has enormous respect. And uh, it makes for a lovely, lovely, cozy, everybody accepts what you're doing as being really good. And I was very touched by some of the, the older crew, you know, who have watched the <laughs> 3 p.m. from the beginning, how nice they were and how supportive. And then you have the young cast, John and Daisy and Oscar, who would regularly, whilst they're acting, just see that I was about to totter forward or fall over, and they would run and catch me. What are you doing there, 3 p.m.? Taking, taking one last look, sir, at my friends. It was actually very moving. And when I saw the cut that's in the trailer, it was exactly timed as, as we shot it, and JJ put in a lovely picture of Daisy looking at me. But the verbal timing was the same. And it, for some reason, it is 
very touching because 3PO has had these groups of friends all the time, but in this one, The Rise of Skywalker, he really did become a part of the team, JJ and Chris Terrio, the writer, put him you know, pretty much front and center there. So he, he has adventures, if you like. I didn't realize how important it was gonna to be to me to have such fun on this film, this last film. And I, I've really, I've really had a good time. I don't think I can make it. That isn't very reassuring. Oh my, what have you done? Favorite line of 3PO, there, there's so many things, you know, I, sometimes I just don't understand human behavior, that kind of thing, because that is elemental to his, his personality. And on that basis also, really my favorite line, probably because it sums us all up. We are doomed. A lot of people love C-3PO, and it's something that took me a while to kind of accept. And I think it's because, remarkably, he does exhibit qualities that are far more human than a human. He's allowed to be exaggerated and overt with his emotions. If it was a human, you'd go, eh, shut up, you know, eh, go away. But with him, people see in 3PO human traits that they have that they're not really allowed to talk about. He allows us to, to see our own fears, for instance. I've been talking about a, a fan I met recently who, uh, at the age of about five or six, shared his fears of watching the movie from behind the sofa. He shared his fears with 3PO, because it was okay to be afraid, even though he was a, meant to be a grown-up little boy. If 3PO was afraid, that was, that was okay. If I had one thing to say to fans, is how many people come up to me at events, whatever, and say literally these words, thank you for my childhood. And the one thing I say back to them is, well, thank you for being there.